blink twice, or you might just want to shut your eyes and avoid the whole movie. Wow. I'm going to have to do a little piece here on this hack job of a movie. Really astonishing how bad it was. It's got Channing Tatum, who he's been in a few decent movies, I guess, but I've never seen him with any hair. And the beard on him looks kind of weird, kind of gr scruffy, not very appealing. It's written and directed, co-written and directed by Zoe Kravitz. She's known for being in a lot of different films the last 17 years, not any of them really that good. Uh, maybe The Batman would be her best movie, I guess. And we've got a co-star, Naomi Aki, who plays Frida. And she's been in a fair amount of movies the last 10 years. Nothing memorable, nothing I've ever seen. So the first time I've seen her. They make a comment early in the film, she plays a cocktail waitress, and they make a comment that uh, she says, how do I look? And they say, she looks like a cute boy. And she does, she just looks like a cute boy. She's not beautiful, even though they say she is in the movie. Wow, where to begin? This movie kind of wants to be like the Triangle of Sadness, which is not a great movie either, but it's light years better than this one. This movie reminded me of an old Ed Wood movie, Orgy of the Dead. It's just like a remake of it in 2024, and they're on amphetamines because everybody, it's very fast-paced dialogue. Channing Tatum plays a supposedly, I guess, a millionaire or billionaire, maybe a little bit like Je uh, Epstein, you know, the Epstein Island and all that. And he's a super rich guy who's kind of depraved, and they're into a lot of drugs and weird stuff. And he apparently, he starts the movie off talking about how he's in recovery and therapy and it's helping him and all this. So we know that's not going to be true. This is very contrived. Uh, most of the dialogue is very glib, very uh, just bogus. I mean, nothing meaningful. The characters are so badly acted. It's just none of the acting is very good at all across the board. And, but what happens is the character that plays Slater King, that's Channing Tatum's character, the rich billionaire playboy, whatever, suddenly it, one night meets this Frida, a cocktail waitress, and invites her and her friend to their island. And when they get to the island, they gotta give up their phones, of course. They don't like that, but that's the rules. And so what they indulge in then for the first hour and 10 minutes is just a lot of banter, partying. Uh, this could be a great public service movie, I guess, for not drinking and taking drugs, folks. It just shows how stupid and ignorant the people are and act and behave, really bad behavior, for an hour and 10 minutes. We're assaulted with this, more or less. And, you know, I put up with it because I really was curious to see what was going to happen. They, they warn you at the very beginning of the movie, this is an MGM Amazon. MGM's an Amazon company now. They swallowed them up. And uh, they tell you in the beginning, there's going to be some graphic scenes of violence and sexual and this and that. So if you're going to be upset about it, we're warning you, you know, ahead of time. And of course, there is some of that. And the last half hour, what happens is uh, everything comes unglued because throughout the film, they're being given a drug that creates memory loss. And of course, there's real drugs out there that people get prescribed all the time that cause that. Ativan, a benzodiazepine. Yeah, I took that one for 13 years under the, you know, prescription of my doctor who told me it was safe and it causes memory blackouts. So there are real drugs that can cause memory blackouts, not to mention electroshock therapy, which is a whole different thing. But back to the movie. So the movie goes on. We have snakes, venomous snakes out there. Somebody gets bit, of course. Chickens running around and just a lot of nonsense. The, the set design is very cheap. It's supposed to be set on some luxury island, but it just looked cheap as hell to me. And so the final half hour, I laughed. I realized this really is just like a really bad movie, like a comedy, an Ed Wood movie that you're actually going to laugh at. And I had some good laughs. I was really the only one in the theater laughing out of about 20, 25 people. But I thought it was that was the payoff for me that made the movie at least worth my trip over here to see it. Uh, was a little bit of the humor because you used to get a lot of slashing and stabbing and people shooting each other and mayhem and everybody gets killed pretty much. And so you think this movie's going to wind up just being, you know, a, a dead end at the very end with everybody dead, but no, I don't want to give too many spoilers. Well, actually, I do want to spoil it because I want to advise you to skip this movie and miss this movie. Save it for streaming sometime. It'll be on Amazon free in a couple of months. And Kyle MacLachlan, he looks very uncomfortable in his little cameo performance. He shows up twice for just a couple of minutes and he doesn't you know, get to do much of anything, any quality. So he just did it for the money, I'm sure. 
But uh, at the very end, there's a little twist. I won't give that part away, but it's silly. The whole film doesn't add up to anything. Just an absurd movie put out for the masses. I suppose some people are gonna like it. I can't imagine why. All right, well, that's my take on the movie I saw today. Blink twice, I yawned about 15 times until the murder started happening. That kind of woke me up. <laughs>